Chapter 7 is about valid inequalities for structured integer programs. In Chapter 5, we have seen how to derive several classes of valid inequalities for integer programming problems. And all the inequalities that we have seen are called general purpose. This means that they have a great advantage, that they can be obtained for any integer programming problem. This, in particular, means that the way we derive them does not use at all the structure of the specific integer programming problem. What we're going to do in this chapter is, from this point of view, exactly the opposite of what we did in chapter 5. In fact, we're going to obtain inequalities that are not valid for any integer programming problem, but just for some special integer programming problems. On the other hand, we will be heavily using the underlying combinatorial structure of the specific problem. In particular, most of the inequalities that we will talk about are facet defining for the integer half. In particular, in this chapter, we will be talking about lifting of inequalities, separations of valid inequalities and how to use separation to solve optimization problems. To warm up, now we will talk about cover inequalities for the 0-1 knapsack problem. We have already seen the 0-1 knapsack set. It is this set, capital K, defined as the set of binary points that satisfy just one inequality, sum of the ij xj less than or equal to b. Here, in our, in our knapsack problem, the aj were the weights of, all our, of each of our objects, and b is the total capacity, the weight limit of our knapsack. We assume that all the data is uh, strictly positive, and uh, we will be using a capital N to denote uh, the set uh, 1 to N of all the objects we are considering. In chapter 3, we have already seen that the dimension of k, or equivalently of the convex hull of k, is exactly n minus the cardinality of the set j, where the set j contains exactly the items, or the indices in n, whose weight is uh, strictly larger than our weight limit uh, of the backpack. In our subsequent discussion, we want to assume that the convex hull of K is full dimensional for simplicity. So we assume that for every item, its weight is upper bounded by the weight limit. In this way, the set capital J is the empty set. And so the dimension of the convex hull of K is exactly N. And so conv of K is full dimensional. In chapter two, we discussed minimal covers. So let's recap what they were. So a cover is a subset of items such that you cannot carry with you all of them at the same time. So in formula, the sum of all the ij for j in c is strictly larger than b. And we say that a cover is minimal if for any item in the cover, if we remove from the cover just that one item, we can carry with us everything else. For any cover c, we can write the corresponding cover inequality, which is the sum of all the xj's for j and c is at most the cardinality of c minus one. And we've seen that cover inequalities are valid for the convex hull of k. We have also seen that there can be exponentially many cover inequalities. Therefore, if we want to use them in a cutting plane scheme, we are interested in solving the following separation problem over such inequalities. We're given a vector x bar in the hypercube 0, 1 to the n. And uh, the question is, does there exist a cover inequality for k violated by x bar or not? Now we're going to see how we can formulate this problem as an integer programming problem. The standard trick to formulate the separation problem over a family of inequalities as an optimization problem consists in writing down the inequalities in such a way that the right-hand side doesn't depend on the specific inequality. In our setting, a cover inequality relative to a cover C is violated by our vector if and only if this strict inequality holds. And now let's apply the trick. How can we obtain a right hand that is independent on C? Well, we can just bring a cardinality of C on the left and bring it inside the sum. So we obtain the sum for J and C of 1 minus x bar J, strictly smaller than 1. 
<coughs> at this point, deciding whether a violated cover inequality exists can easily be written as the following optimization problem. We minimize this expression, so the sum for j in c of 1 minus x bar of j, over any cover c for k. And now let's look at the optimum value of such an optimization problem. There are two cases that we're interested in. If zeta is greater than or equal to 1, it means that for every cover, this sum is greater than or equal to 1. Therefore, x bar satisfies all the cover inequalities. On the other hand, if zeta is strictly smaller than 1, then look at the cover C that gives you exactly this minimum. For this specific cover, we have that this sum is strictly smaller than 1, and so this uh, optimal cover gives you a cover inequality violated by x bar. Now let's see how we can formulate this optimization problem that determines zeta as an integer programming problem. Everything we need to do is to introduce variable zj, and the idea here is that zj will be equal to 1 if and only if the item j is in the cover. So now the objective function is supposed to represent this function. So it's now the sum over all j of 1 minus x bar j times zj. So zj will filter out all the j's that are not in C, and so we obtain exactly this sum essentially. Then z is binary, of course. We only need to encode the fact that the zj's with j equal to 1 correspond to a cover. So how can we write that? The, our first idea would be to write that the sum of all the aj, zj is strictly larger than b. That's exactly the definition of a cover. However, we cannot write strict inequalities in integer programming problems. Therefore, under the assumption that all the aj's and the b are integral, which we can assume with a loss of generality by scaling, we can write the inequality sum of aj, zj greater than or equal to b plus 1, since this sum will always be integer. We have now written our integer programming problem to find zeta. However, the problem here is that this specific integer programming problem to find zeta is in general NP-hard. So this doesn't give us a way to solve the separation problem over cover inequalities efficiently. So in this case, one needs to consider heuristics. And still, there are several heuristics that, while of course don't allow you to find zeta uh, exactly in polynomial time, they can give you some very useful information about zeta. So let's see an example of such an heuristic. What is the first thing we always do if we're not able to solve an integer programming problem? Well, we just take its standard LP relaxation. So this is exactly the standard LP relaxation of the problem that we've just written. And uh, let's denote a basic optimal solution by Z star and the optimal value by Zeta star. Then let's look now at uh, Zeta star and our task is to use the information on zeta star to argue something about zeta. Well, the good news is that if zeta star is greater than or equal to 1, then also zeta is greater than or equal to 1, obviously, because zeta is the optimal value of the same objective function over a smaller set, and we're minimizing. Therefore, in this specific case, if we have zeta star greater than or equal to 1, then zeta is greater than or equal to 1, and so we can conclude that there is no violated cover inequality whatsoever. Great. So we're going to have to pay the price of our heuristic only in the remaining case, zeta star strictly smaller than 1. In this case, our heuristic just outputs the following cover. C is a set of j's with a z j star, strictly larger than zero. So the first thing we should observe is that this indeed is a cover. Well, and this is clear because Z star is feasible for this LP. So it satisfies this linear inequality. So the sum of the AJ is J is greater than or equal to B plus one. And now when we consider this cover C, we're essentially 
taking the ceiling of every zj and so we're increasing some of the values of zj here therefore this sums becomes larger since the aj are positive and so this remains a greater than or equal to b plus one and so capital c is a cover however this is not necessarily a cover that gives you an inequality that is violated by x bar in fact even though theta star is strictly smaller than one we could still have two cases that the original zeta is greater than or equal to 1 or that zeta is strictly smaller than 1. In the first case, well then there is no violated cover inequality. So essentially we're outputting a cover inequality but it's satisfied by x bar. In the second case we have a zeta strictly smaller than 1. In this case there are cover inequalities violated by x bar but still, the cover inequality that we give, corresponding to this set capital C, could cut off x bar or not. We just don't know. Any of these two options can happen. And again, I just want to stress that using this heuristic, we of course know explicitly the value zeta star because we obtain it by solving this linear programming problem. But this value zeta, well, we don't know it. Otherwise, there would be no need to use zeta star. And this concludes this brief section of this chapter. Next, we're going to be introducing the concept of lifting while keeping as an example cover inequalities.